Hi folks, installing Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi 5 has long time been a desire of many Raspberry Pi users. The original Raspberry Pi 5 can run Windows 11 directly with the help of UEFI BIOS. There were three versions, Open 1, Open 2 and Open 3. Unfortunately, the development has been stopped and no new versions can be expected. For Raspberry Pis with the new system and chip marked D, which can support up to 16 GB of RAM, the only remaining option to install install Windows 11 is through virtualization. QEMU virtualization environment offers two options for installing Windows 11. QEMU is not only a hypervisor, but it can also emulate other architectures like x64 and x86 of Intel and AMD processors. However, this mode is only efficient for running very old versions of Windows like Windows XP and Windows 7, while Windows 10 and Windows 11 are too slow to be of any practical use. However, there is a Windows 11 version for ARM64 architecture that we were also able to run directly on the old Raspberry Pi 5. Running this version of Windows in a virtualization environment on a hypervisor requires QVM virtualization support. However, this haven't worked on Raspberry Pi 5 until recently. It's not clear whether there were incorrect settings because many were guessing how to do it, but none was successful. Fortunately, BotSpot, virtual machines, VVM for short, has recently developed a new application that enables you to easily install Windows 11 to Raspberry Pi 5 QEMU virtual environment even for a beginner. The installation is done in six steps, which can also be run from a graphical user interface that will guide you through the installation process. The application is basically a suite of scripts that will automatically install all the prerequisites, including Windows 11 ARM64 version and all the necessary drivers for the virtualization environment. It's going to build and manage a single virtual machine with Windows 11. Windows 11 installation is automatic without any kind of user intervention. If you are using a Raspberry Pi 5 with an SSD drive, it will take about 2 to 3 hours to complete. If you are using a Raspberry Pi 5 with an SD card, it will take much longer. Knowing all this, we are now ready to start BVM application installation. On Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm operating system, there are basically two options. You can either install it directly from GitHub or you can use Pi apps to install it from a menu. If you are installing it directly, just go to GitHub Botspot BVM webpage and copy the two command lines from Get Started to a command window on Raspberry Pi OS. BVM application is not designed to run as root, so just install it and run it from your home user directory. You have to start BVM application with two parameters. The first one is mode of operation. For example, you can write GUI, which means graphical user's interface. And the second one is path where your virtual machine will reside. To begin with, it's sufficient to create an empty directory. All the files in it will be created automatically during the installation process. As you run the first step, virtual machine is created together with its context file, which is named GUI steps complete. It only holds a number of the last completed step to prevent you selecting options that are not yet available due to previous steps not being completed. Though the second step seems to be obvious because everything seems to be preset, it might not be so. If you are installing a virtual machine and uh, you want to optimize the amount of memory it's going to use on your SSD drive or SD card, then you can find an option to set your own size of the system drive, but keep in mind that, that less than 30 gigabytes or at least 26 gigabytes would be insufficient to install Windows 11. You can also preset the amount of RAM that's going to be used for the virtual machine. Taking a closer look to BVM config file, you can see that there are also other interesting options. For example, the bloat is set to true, which means that during installation process, all the unnecessary applications, for example, Microsoft Shop, LinkedIn, and so on, would have been removed from the newly installed Windows. If you want to keep them, like in original Windows installation, just set this parameter to false or comment it. There is also a reduced graphics parameter, which can lower graphics complexity for less capable computer systems. You can also pass certain parameters for RDP 
terminal client. And now let's get to the third step that is probably the strictest. If you've installed a virtual machine automatically from Microsoft servers for a number of times, your IP might get blocked. In this case, the only option is to obtain and copy the ISO file with the operating system's installation manually to virtual machine's directory and rename it install ISO. However, the BVM script may still fail on the third step. Luckily, there is an easy solution to this problem. Just copy the error message text and search for it in the BVM script. You'll find the lines which automatically download the ISO file with Windows installation and comment them, as you can see in the video. Then restart the step 3. The following steps 4 and 5 will work flawlessly, but you have to keep in mind that step 5 is the longest one and will take about 2 to 3 hours to complete. Afterwards, you're going to be able to run your virtual machine from step 6. There are three operation modes available. Direct, Free, RDP and Remina. The virtual machine opens its own display window in direct mode, where it presents graphics in a very low resolution of 640 by 480. The additional two modes first start the virtual machine without a graphics display and then they connect to it through a graphics terminal client. If you haven't already installed it, the necessary terminal client application would be installed automatically. And now the tricky part. If you want to run the terminal with a higher resolution than the default resolution, for example with Remino this is 1280 by 720, first run it and then close it and then go to the virtual machines directory and find file named connect.remina and open it within a text editor where you can edit window width and height parameters to your desire. However, it's not a great idea to set a very high resolution because the video display will get sluggish. You can also watch a video from YouTube but not expect it to be fluid. On the contrary, you might catch a seasickness. I've also done some tests with LibreOffice, which you can install like on an ordinary PC. It turned out that the text graphics also works fast on higher resolutions like 2200 by 1200. I guess this is through data terminal throughput optimization. Otherwise, if there is a need to transfer large amounts of data between the virtual machine and the terminal, there is a very poor performance. Now you are probably wondering how I've tested BVM virtualization environment. I've used my Extreme Raspberry Pi that was recently upgraded with Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 GB of RAM. And I really like it, because 16 GB of RAM is crucial when running virtual machines. You have to take into account that you have the underlying operating system, in this case Raspberry Pi OS, that needs memory and you have a virtual machine sitting on the top of it, which also needs a lot of memory. So running Raspberry Pi OS and Windows virtual machine turns out to actually exploit all the available RAM. If you need to run more than one virtual machine, it's not a bad idea to set a limit to which Windows 11 virtual machine can use RAM. For example, 8 gigabytes would be great. So you have another 8 gigabytes of RAM for other applications. Another very important feature of Extreme Raspberry Pi 5 is that it's running at 3 gigahertz. This is a 20% increase in speed and uh, it comes very useful when waiting for lengthy operations to complete. It also features PCIe extension boards with 4 M.2 slots for SSD drives to maximum data availability. So you don't have to pull SSD drives, SD cards or other drives in and out to be able to run a certain operating system. So as you can guess, uh, we have a very capable Raspberry Pi 5. And now let's talk about BVM performance. If I compare it to my old Raspberry Pi, which was able to run Windows 11 directly using UEFI BIOS, running Windows through a virtual machine is much slower. I'd say at least four to five times slower. If you compare playing a video in Windows 11 that is directly installed on Raspberry Pi 5 with the old system on chip, it runs fluently. The ultimate Raspberry Pi 5 for running Windows 11 and the ultimate Raspberry Pi of all of them is Raspberry Pi 5 with the old C1 system on chip with 8 gigabytes of RAM. But it needs an add-on, because current and the last UEFI BIOS, which was discontinued, this is version 0.3, only supports USB devices. And it doesn't support Raspberry Pi's internal Ethernet adapter, nor its Wi-Fi adapter. An external add-on card connects through a USB port. 
there is a perfect add-on card with two Ethernet ports, which connects to the two USB 3.0 ports. You can also connect it just to one USB port. This card also features an M.2 connector, which is connected directly without any kind of PCIe switch to Raspberry Pi 5's PCIe connector. So you can have one Gen 3 SSD drive. What I had hoped was my new Raspberry Pi with 16 GB to have been able to run Windows 11 directly. Unfortunately, this dream hasn't come true. I have to run it as a virtual machine, which is still better than nothing. If you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe button. And don't forget about the notification button. See you in the next video. Bye.